To be moral, to act in accordance with custom, to be ethical, means to practice obedience towards a law or tradition established from of old. Whether one subjects oneself with effort, or gladly and willingly, makes no difference. It is enough that one does it. He is called good who does what is customary as if by nature, as a result of a long inheritance, that is to say easily and gladly, and this is so whatever what is customary may be. Exacts revenge, for example, when exacting revenge is part of good custom, as it was with the ancient Greeks. He is called good because he is good for something. Since, however, benevolence, sympathy, and the like have throughout all the changes in customs always been seen as good for something, as useful, it is now above all the benevolent, the helpful, who are called good. To be evil is not to act in accordance with custom, to practice things not sanctioned by custom, to resist tradition however rational or stupid that tradition may be. In all the laws of custom of all times, however, doing injury to one's neighbor has been seen as injurious above all else, so that now at the word evil we think especially of voluntarily doing injury to one's neighbor. Egoistic and unegoistic is not the fundamental antithesis which has led men to make the distinction between, in accordance with custom, and in defiance of custom, between good and evil, but adherence to a tradition, a law, and severance from it. How the tradition has arisen is here a matter of indifference, and has in any event nothing to do with good and evil, or with any kind of imminent categorical imperative. It is above all directed at the preservation of a community, a people. Every superstitious usage which has arisen on the basis of some chance event, mistakenly interpreted, enforces a tradition which it is in accordance with custom to follow. For to sever oneself from it is dangerous, and even more injurious to the community than to the individual. Because the gods punish the community for misdeeds, and for every violation of their privileges, and only to that extent punish the individual. Every tradition now continually grows more venerable the farther away its origin lies, and the more this origin is forgotten. The respect paid to it increases from generation to generation. The tradition at last becomes holy and evokes awe and reverence. And thus, the morality of piety is in any event a much older morality than that which demands unegoistic actions.